The last four poker videos I've posted was from my week-long Las Vegas trip earlier this month where I won over $8,000 playing at the Bellagio and the win. Well, I've been back in Florida now for over 10 days and in this video, I'm playing the 2023 Lucky Hearts Poker Open main event here at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. It's a $3,500 buy-in, a massive field. It's a huge tournament with millions of dollars in the guaranteed prize pool. I'm planning to fire two bullets if needed. I buy in around level three of day number 1A for 50,000 chips. Let's get started. First hand I play blinds at 200, 400. I raise to 1,000 with queen 10 offsuit. Get four callers, so we're five ways to a queen 6-3 board. When it checks to me, I bet out 1,500 and only the low jack player makes the call. So we're out of position now to the deuce of hearts on the turn. This brings in 4-5, it's a better card for my opponent, so I slow down and check, and he instantly checks back. River card's 7 of clubs, and I definitely think I can go for value now with my top pair. I think he's going to have a lot of hands like pocket 8s, pocket 9s, maybe pocket 10s, possibly a 6x hand, so I overbet the pot, polarize my sizing here to make it look like a bluff, and I bet 10,000 chips. I bet this sizing on the river because I don't think my opponent's ever going to have a queen x hand in this situation. I checked the turn and he checked back, which I don't think he's going to be doing with queen jack, king queen, ace queen, two pair, or set. So I make this sizing to make it look like a bluff and we do end up getting called, but we get called by queen jack for top pair, slightly better kicker, and we totally value own ourselves here in our first hand. Looking back, I don't like this sizing with my particular hand. If I had a hand like ace-queen or an overpair, I like this sizing. But with queen-10, I think just a smaller bet or even a check would be fine. After going through the blinds a couple times, we now have around a 31,000 chip stack. Moving on here, blinds at 300, 600 in the next level. I raise under the gun with queens, a beautiful sight to 1,200 chips. Folds all the way to the small blind who calls, and this opponent covers me, the big blind folds. Heads up. In position to deuce six queen two hearts top set for us small blind checks i think he's going to have a lot of broadway cards in pocket pairs i don't want to check and give a free card to a flush draw or a hand that may call a small bet so i just bet one big blind on this flop with top set 600 and unfortunately no action for us the small blind folds there was very little three betting going on at this table. So when it folds to me in the cutoff and I'm sitting around 100 big blinds deep, I decide to make a loose open here with 9-7 offsuit. And I get called by the small blind and the big blind and we go three ways to a 5-7-8 board. I flop second pair and a gut shot straight draw one over card. When it checks to me, I decide to pot control and check this one back. Turn card, five of spades, pairing the board and bringing in a flush draw. Now the small blind, who just called preflop, leads out for 2,000 chips. When the action's on me, I consider just folding my hand, because it's a paired board. He could have a 5, I could be drawing dead, he could have an over pair or an 8x hand, and I'm just drawing super thin. What if I hit a 9, and it gives him a straight? But I think a 2,000 chip bet is fine. It's hard to make a pair in this game, so I make the call. Going here to the river, which is the queen of hearts, I'm expecting the small blind to check on this river card. Just because it's an over card of the board, I should have more queen x in my range, but the small blind very quickly bets out 3,000 chips, and I felt like this was somewhat of a sizing and a timing tell as well. I just felt like he was bluffing in this situation. I mean, he's representing a very narrow range when he does continue on this river card. I don't think he's betting this sizing or this quickly, or even betting this river at all with an 8x hand. I think he would just check that over to me. So either he's bluffing here with missed straight draws, missed flush draws, or he's got a very strong hand like trip fives, a straight, which we block with our nine, or maybe a full house, which is somewhat unlikely. So I go into the tank for a while, I contemplate hero calling or folding. I then think to myself, I only have 30,000 chips left. If I make this call, I'm going to be down to 25,000. I can't add on, but it just felt like he was bluffing here. Then I think to myself, well, maybe he's trying to go for thin value with an 8x hand. And I call this 7x hand and look like an idiot. But after about two minutes, I decide to make the call. And we get shown the good news, King 10 of spades for a missed flush draw, and our seven is good to take down a decent pot here in level number four. 
I've always tried to be fully transparent with you guys, and I'm not going to lie, this $3,500 buy-in tournament is a large buy-in for me. So instead of taking 100% of my own risk using 100% of my own money, I decided to sell some action in this tournament. So I went on Instagram and on Twitter, and I offered up people to buy action for this tournament buy-in. I said I was going to be selling two bullets at 1.1x markup, and I immediately got a message from tournament crusher Chance Cornuth on Twitter saying that he would buy 50% of both of my bullets. Well, this is the best case scenario. One person buying all of your action, it makes it completely easy. So of course, I took him up on his offer and shout out to Chance for taking a little bit of a sweat in this tournament. We're doing okay so far. We're just about up to starting stack. Over the next hour, I pick up two nice pocket pairs. One pocket queens, I get one caller, and unfortunately we lose this hand when the board comes out ace, king high with a flush draw, and I end up folding here on the river. The next hand, I raise up here with pocket tens to 2,500. I end up getting four callers. I see about the flop and take that one down. We now made it to level number six. I got 57,000 chips in my stack, which is good for 71 big blinds, which is a ton of chips to play for in a tournament. This next hand is one of the most interesting hands of the day. When the middle position player opens, there's a low jack call and I peel back ace king on the button. I decide to get a little tricky here in flat call preflop. One, because I'm on the button, I have last act position and because the middle position player has around 38 big blinds to start the hand. So it's just an awkward situation if I three bet and he four bets. We don't really want to be calling off ace king for that many big blinds. Well, the flop comes out ace high, giving me top pair, top kicker, and the initial raiser bets out 3,500 chips. And now the low jack player makes the call for 3,500. The low jack player had been playing a lot of hands, a rather splashy player. So when it gets to me on the button, I feel like we just have the nuts here. We have top pair, top kicker. I don't think the middle position player is going to be betting this sizing with a set of sixes or sevens. I also think he can have ace queen, ace jack. The low jack player can have straight draws, a seven. He can have backdoor flush draws, a weaker ace. So I raise it up right away to 1300 chips. Middle position player gets out of the way, but then the low jack player back jams all in for over 100,000 chips, which covers me. And now my mind is in the blender. Holy shit. The low jack player just called the $3,500 bet. I raised the 1300, the middle position player folds, and now the low jack player goes all in. I have top paired top kicker in a tournament with around 45 big blinds left. Could I ever fold in this spot, or do I just always have to put in the call? Before I explain what was going through my head, I want you guys to pause the video right now. Let me know what you would do in this situation. Would you call all in with ace king, or would you fold? All right, I'll give you some time. Okay, now you're back. All right, so... What I decided to do here was just look at this particular player and think to myself, is this guy ever jamming all in here for my tournament life for a huge bet with ace queen, ace jack, ace 10? Well, the answer is no, in my opinion. One, I don't think this guy's doing this with a weaker ace. I think he would just call with that hand. I also don't think he's ever bluffing in this situation. This guy was playing a lot of hands, but he wasn't playing super aggressive like a maniac. He was calling, he was making some hands, he was winning some pots, and now he has a decent stack. I don't think he's risking a huge part of his stack with a hand like 8-9 for a straight draw or 4-5 for a straight draw. I feel like he always has two pair, a set, or that's it. On the other hand, I did slow play my hand pre-flop, maybe... I should find the call here, but I just don't think he's bluffing. I don't think he's ever doing this with the worst hands. So I reluctantly fold, leave myself with over 40 big blinds to play for. And lucky for me, my opponent later on told me he flopped a set of sevens, which is super sick, a massive cooler for us. And I think we actually lost a minimum. It's now the last hand before a 90 minute dinner break at 5.30 PM. There's a tight player who raises a small blind call and I just call in the big blind with ace jack suited and see an ace king jack board. We flop two pair. The rest of the tournament players are leaving for their long break, but not me. I am locked in this hand. Two pair on the flop, small blind checks. I check an initial raiser puts out a bet. Now the small blind player who had been rather passive the entire tournament now raises it up to 8,000 chips, leaving himself 
with around 12,000 chips behind. Now the action's over on me. We called pre-flop, we flopped two pair, the initial raiser bet, and now there's a check raise by a short stack. In this situation, I feel like my options are fold or just go all in. I've got around 30, 40 big blinds or so. And in this situation, I think two pair is just way too strong to ever be folding here. Honestly, I think the small blind is gonna have some two pairs that we're beating. And maybe the small blind could have a combo draw, such as 10x of diamonds, queen x of diamonds, maybe jack x of diamonds as well, possibly ace 10. He can have king jack, and because the small blind didn't three bet preflop, he should really never have ace king or pocket jacks or pocket aces. So I feel like the small blind is only beating us with one particular hand, which is queen 10. So I decide to rip it all in here with two pair. Initial razor folds, small blind pretty quickly makes the call and shows us queen 10. Okay, nice flop for him. He ends up flopping a straight and we flop two pair. The board runs out and we do not improve. And on the last hand, right before dinner break, I end up losing over half of my stack here in a sick cooler two pair versus a straight. Such a tilting hand right before dinner break, losing a massive pot. I had to hero fold ace king and I finally flopped two pair versus a straight. I'm on massive tilt, but lucky enough for me, I get to drive home and let out my little buddy rogue. I eat some dinner at my apartment and it really helps me cool down and relax. After that hand, I was completely steamed up, tilted from the day. I had to fold ace king versus a set and I finally flopped two pair versus a straight. But over this long dinner break, I was able to kind of control myself and cool down and think, look, you still have 18 big blinds left after break. That's a ton of chips in a tournament. After about an hour and a half back home, I head back to the poker room, 18 big blinds in my stack. I feel much more ready to play now. My mind is right. I'm ready to go. Let's run it up. It doesn't take us long to get all in here. Once I'm back at the table, there's a raise to 3,000. I've got about 15 big blinds and look down at pocket tens and rip it all in. Back to the initial raiser who folds and we take this one down here with tens, adding a little bit back to our stack. Just a few hands later, there's a raise from the same player and a call. I'm on the button with 21 big blinds and ace king offsuit. I jam all in and get called by the initial raiser. I show ace king and he shows pocket nines. My opponent covers me, so we've got a hit here to stay alive. Again. Well, first bullet did not quite go our way. We bust out shortly after dinner break. I decide to head over to the poker room where there's a ton of tournament players who just busted out ready to play some cash. I end up playing about four hours here, losing around $1,900. Then I go home, get some sleep, and get ready for day number 1B. So, day 1A didn't quite go our way. Um... Felt like I ran pretty bad, kind of got cooler in some spots, maybe made some slight mistakes, but now it's Saturday, the next day, day 1B. We're gonna fire another bullet. Let's see how it goes. All right, second try here. 50,000 starting stack, level number three. I actually get to play at the same table as 2015 World Series of Poker main event champion, Joe McKean. He won $7 million back in 2015, and now he's sitting two seats to my left. Well. I raise hijack calls and Joe makes the call and the cutoff going three ways to six, four, deuce, two clubs. I check on this board with my pair and gut shot like I would do with basically 100% of my range. Joe bets out 1500 and I make the call. Turn card, three of spades, giving us a straight. I check to him thinking that he'll continue to bet here with all of his bluffs and some of his value hands as well, but he decides to check back. River king of spades, backdoor flush gets there and there's an over card to the top card on the flop. I lead out small for a 2,000 chip bet and get a quick call by Joe, the 2015 World Series of Poker main event champion, and we take this one down, starting off the day with a nice little win against the champ. Next up, folds to me on the button with King Jack suited, I raise, and Joe McKean, World Series of Poker main event champion, makes the call ace, queen, ten, two spades, we flop the nut straight, and a royal flush draw. I check back, and we see the ten of spades on the turn. I have the royal flush, the best possible hand, on a paired board, up against the 2015 main event champion. 
He checks and I check back again. Just trying to trap here. I know he probably doesn't have anything on this board, but I'm just hoping he can catch up or maybe bluff the river. Final card, seven of spades, and now Joe leads out for an $1,800 bet. I'm pretty sure he's bluffing here. Maybe he's putting out a small bet with a spade in his hand, but the chances are he's just bluffing with a hand that can't really call a raise. But of course, we're gonna have to raise this river. I mean, we have the absolute super nuts with the Royal Flush. It is somehow possible he could have ace 10, queen 10 offsuit, 10 seven, pocket sevens. And if he does have a full house, I wanna try to go for broke here with my Royal Flush. I don't want to raise small and have him just call. So I decide to raise huge, just trying to target those hands. And of course, like I thought, he has nothing at all. He showed me the three of hearts and folded. And of course, we have to show the royal flush the second time for this vlog, hitting a royal flush. And I think my fifth royal in my lifetime. A much better start than yesterday. We beat the main event champion twice. We hit a royal flush. I feel like nothing can go wrong now. Well, I call a raise from the button with pocket threes and go heads up to jack, jack, eight, rainbow. The button now puts out a half pot size bet on this board. Now with pocket threes on a paired board, we could probably just fold here, but a lot of the time we are gonna have the best hand. He's probably gonna have a lot of ace high hands, king high, queen high hands, or even some suited connectors like five six suited four five suited that he raised here from the button so instead of folding and instead of calling i decided to go with the aggressive route and check raise up to 3600 chips this is kind of a merge play where if i check raise here i can get him to fold out hands that have a lot of equity against us like two over cards hands that won't really call those kind of bets by also check raising here it's possible I could get better hands to fold. Maybe he folds pocket sevens or pocket sixes. And also by check raising here, I could maybe bluff later on if I put him on a one pair hand. Well, after he calls the flop, I'm pretty sure he has an over pair in this situation. So the turns in nine of spades obviously doesn't help us at all. And it could help him. So I slow down and check and he instantly checks behind. Interesting spot to the seven on the river. This board is very scary and connected now. Any 10 makes a straight. There's two jacks, there's full houses. I check the turning, he instantly checks back. And now on the river, he's talking to me. He's asking me, how much are you gonna bet? 5,000, 6,000? And after he's talking to me for a while, I just feel like he always has a one pair hand like aces, kings, and queens. He's wanting me to check. He doesn't like this run out. So I decide to turn my hand into a bluff, put max pressure on those one pair hands which I think he has, and bet 10,000 chips. I haven't bluffed at all on this table. I've been pretty quiet. The last hand I showed was a royal flush on the river. I'm hoping my opponent will give me credit for a full house, maybe a straight, or even trips. All those hands beat his one pair hand, but eventually he makes the call. I show pocket threes, and he shows pocket aces, the exact hand I thought he had, and we couldn't get him to fold this time. You know, you would think I would learn my lesson not trying to bluff these recreational calling stations, but I try to do it time and time again. I do feel good about this hand that I correctly ranged him to aces, kings, or queens, and I put max pressure on him. I do think maybe a bigger bet would have been better here, but I think just a fold on the flop. The thing that's different about tournaments than cash games that I have to adjust to is that you just have to preserve your chips. You can't be making loose calls or loose bluffs early on in the tournament. You just have to try to find better spots. And I feel like this was a spot I could have easily, easily given up on right on the flop. But, oh well, let's move on. The very next hand, the same player who hero called me with pocket aces, raises in the cutoff. The button calls with pocket nines in the small blind. I three bet squeeze to 5,000 chips. As you can see here on the right hand side, I don't have that many chips behind in my stack. The cutoff player folds and the button folds and we do take down a small little pot here before the second break of the day. I felt like on day 1A, I played maybe a little bit too passive pre-flop in some spots. And then now today, day 1B, I'm playing maybe a little bit too aggressive, playing too many hands and possibly bluffing in spots I shouldn't be bluffing. Well, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I'm a coach and I'm definitely not saying I'm a tournament crusher. I like to play these tournaments for fun, to mix it up, to get good content for the vlog. And maybe 
bank a huge six-figure or seven-figure score. Like I said before, I'm not trying to say I'm the best tournament player. I make mistakes. Hopefully, you guys can learn from me, learn from my mistakes, and hopefully you guys don't make them when you play tournaments. Well, we've made it now to level number five. I've got 31K in my stack, which is good for 52 big blinds, which is a lot of chips in a tournament. So I just have to relax, try to pick my spots well, and try to continue to chip up. Not really picking up too many hands in this level, and then I get pocket eights under the gun. I raise to 1,200, and Joe three bets me next to act to 3,500. Well, me raising under the gun, him three betting next to act, I don't have that many big blinds. I feel like he's gonna have a strong hand here. Four betting is out of the question. I do think folding's a little bit too weak, so I decide to make the call. We go heads up to an A-side board where I call a small bet, turn check check, and river he bets big, and I fold my pocket eights and lose a little bit in this hand. I don't win any hands in level number five. I made it to level number six now with 23 big blinds. I'm getting down to that red zone area. I raise under the gun with ace nine suited to a min raise. Just two X here. I had 22 big blinds to start the hand and now I have 20 big blinds left. Well, folds all the way to the small blind who puts me all in. Ugh. This sucks. I mean, this small blind player is a recreational player. He probably just has pocket jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king, or ace, queen. I just cannot call here with ace, nine of clubs for 20 big blinds, so I just make the fold. What started out as a good day making a royal flush and beating a main event champion has slowly turned into somewhat of a miserable day by just losing every single hand, not making any hands, and the blinds going up, our chips going down. We're now left with 16k in our stack, 800 big blind, so we've got 20 bigs left. We then go through the blinds one more time, and now we're left with 17 big blinds left. Before I raised a two big blinds with ace 10 on the button, Small blind calls who is an older recreational player. The flop comes out ace 5-5. Five, five. I could bet small or check here and I decide to check for a couple reasons. One, to pot control. Two, to also potentially allow him to bluff on the turn. My hand just needs zero protection. I don't really need to be betting on this particular board. I'm just gonna be way ahead or way behind. Turn card seven of diamonds, small blind checks again. When he checks to me a second time, I don't think he ever has. A hand like ace seven, ace jack, ace queen, or a five. So I bet out two big blinds here on the turn. My opponent pretty quickly makes the call. So I put him on possibly a straight draw, maybe a pair, possibly a seven X hand. So when the river card's a nine and the small blind snap leads into me for an 8,000 chip bet, I am just so confused. He bets 8,000 chips and I only have 10,000 chips in my stack. He's essentially putting me all in here. Such a nasty spot. I check back the flop with top pair. The turn my opponent just called. And the river now he's betting out with a huge sizing when it doesn't really change much at all. I don't think this 9 changes anything. I mean, maybe it's possible he has ace 9. But the way this guy was playing, he was playing very passive. I think ace 9 maybe would just check here on the river. I don't think he has a straight. It's possible he could have been slow playing a 5. But I think if he had a 5, he would check raise the turn. Maybe pocket 7s. Maybe pocket 9s. But in this situation, I've only got 10 big blinds left. I've got a super strong hand button versus small blind and a single raise pot. I check back the flop for this exact reason to hope that maybe he would bluff later on. And the thing is, in these Florida tournaments, sometimes people just do some wacky, wacky shit. If my opponent was a tournament crusher, a European player, or just someone I perceived as a pro, I would just fold here just because I don't think he's ever bluffing in this situation. But my opponent is just an older recreational Florida type man. And in these situations, in these tournaments, sometimes these players do some really weird stuff. I mean, I've seen some really weird plays. So eventually I put in the call and he shows pocket nines for a two outer full house on the river. And we are now left with only two chips left in our stack. This one hurt pretty bad. Variance was just not on our side in this tournament. We were 95% to win in this hand to stay alive in the tournament. And he hit one of those two outs, which leaves us now with two and a half big blinds. Well, there's a raise and I look down at eight, seven suited 
for two and a half big blinds. I'm not sure if I can get any better than this. I'm only two away from the big blind, so I jam all in, and I end up getting five callers. So if I could somehow win this hand, I will have around 14 or 15,000 chips, which would be pretty massive. Well, the four comes out king high, and I do not improve, and seven eight ends up losing to ace king, and our second bullet does not go any better than the first bullet, and we are out. All right, that is it for us. $3,500 main event, two bullets, and we are out. Today was somewhat miserable compared to yesterday. Yesterday, I was actually picking up hands. I was able to play. I was getting in there. It was exciting. Today, I just folded forever. I didn't really play that many hands. I got no big pocket pairs, no aces, kings, queens, jacks, no ace king, no ace queen. Just kind of a boring day. Nothing really happened. I did hit a royal flush, but I won like two big blinds on that hand. I then tried to bluff with pocket threes on jack, jack, eight, seven, nine board, thinking that maybe he would fold an over pair like he had, like aces or kings, but that was a mistake. I don't think, well, I know these guys don't come to these tournaments to fold aces, obviously. Um, they're just calling stations, so I think it's a mistake trying to bluff these players, some of these players in these tournaments. Um, I just shouldn't be bluffing, just trying to value bet, but somewhat of a frustrating day. I'm very competitive in wrestling and in CrossFit earlier on in my life. I would just work really, really hard. Work, work, work. You know, go to practice, do extra work, do lifting, do two a days, three a days. And I worked for years and years and years, and I got up to high levels in those sports. Poker is different where you can work your ass off, you can study, you can put in hours and hours and hours, and you can get ace 10 on an ace high board, and the river's a nine, and he's got pocket nines. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just sick, you know? So it, it's very frustrating for me to play tournaments because I feel like I put in the work, I feel like I have the experience, I have the skill level, and I'm better than a lot of these players in the room or in the table. So it's so frustrating to me to look around and just see some of the with like 200K in their stack and I've got 20K. And I'm like, it's just, it's, it's very frustrating for me, which is why I don't like to play tournaments because I feel like it's more luck, um, higher variance. I like to just play cash where I feel like I have more of an edge and it's not so high variance, but you know, it's fun to, to play some tournaments here and there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, a little bit different video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, I'll see ya.